Say in the name of Jesus. I build capacity. Say it prophetically in the name of Jesus. I build capacity. Oh, my dear sister, build capacity. My dear brother, build capacity. A day will come, something will befall you that you will not have all that energy to pray. You will draw from the residue of the energy that comes within your prayer bank. Please pray. Don't waste moments. Don't waste opportunities. Pray. Listen, let me encourage you. If your prayer life has gone down, you can join the prayer department as they pray. Even if you are not a member there. Even if it's for one week. If there's space, you can join them to just fan your prayer life to flames. Discern an attack on your prayer. It's an attack on your remaining. It's an attack on your continuity. It's an attack on your stamina. That is why it's important to have believers as friends. Did you hear what I said? Half the time people used to gossip. Half the time people used to talk about people and issues. If they invest half that time in quality prayer, you have any prayer partner that spends half the prayer time gossiping, cast him out of your life. Did you hear what I said? Cast him or her out of your life. Don't waste your time on naysayers and gossips and backbiters who wrap up their gossip in the name of Jesus. Take your destiny seriously. You agree with someone, let us pray. Don't waste your time. And he says, praise God. You've prayed for 10 minutes and you continue speaking nonsense for two hours. Then you wrap it up. You did not pray. You only program woes to your destiny. If you have somebody who should pray, the assignment there is for prayer. Okay, we are praying from 10 to 12. Once it's time, all right, let's begin to pray. Yes, occasionally you may speak to discuss some things to give your prayer perspective. Many prayer warriors have killed the prayer life of their colleagues because they wasted that time on gossips and naysayings and false visions. Pray. 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 You are a mother. Find another mother who can agree with you. Pray. You are a businessman. Find another businessman who can relate with your realm and pray. Are we together? You are a man of God. Pray that God will bring a man of God who genuinely loves you and prays. Not that he's praying with his mouth and with his heart. He's saying, may you die quick. But when you find people who can agree with you, you have your personal prayer altar. I have said this endlessly, koinonia. Let me encourage families here. Build your corporate family prayer altar. Build it as a discipline. Now, I know that maybe some families may have people who are not born again. No problem. You can start where you are with wisdom. Build a family prayer altar. Pray. Don't allow the devil come in and ride cheaply into your family. By the privilege of God's grace, let me encourage every man here. Take the lead as far as setting the pace for prayer. Don't say I'm not the prayer type. Nobody's the prayer type. God commands that we pray. Are we together now? Obtain grace. Don't say I'm a CEO. Prayer is not for pastors. Don't leave your wife as a naked intercessor with nobody helping her. Yours is just to submit prayer point by text or on a paper. Pray. You can learn prayer. Is someone learning? Build inner strength. This is something God has taught me. One of our fathers in the faith. Every time I've had the opportunity to see him, particularly when preparing for administration, as soon as I enter his office, he's praying in tongues. Praying in tongues. Praying in tongues. Praying in tongues. He will speak a little and then once he has a little chance he's praying in tongues i said ah that's the secret they understand that capacity is a necessity is a necessary requirement as far as remaining is concerned number four is god helping someone you would outlast every adversity you would outlast every season every condition in the name of jesus 30 years from now, you will still be standing. Are you receiving that? 
50 years from now you will still be standing you will not stand alone your children will stand with you your family will stand with you your business will stand with you your organization will stand with you the cancer that fights longevity let it be far from your life very quickly number four what is the fourth key that empowers men to last giving them longevity of impact providing the staying power are you ready be joyful void of bitterness and offense write it down be joyful comma void of bitterness and offense you want to last i show you ancient secrets be joyful void of bitterness and offense philippians 4 4 let's work together media help me philippians 4 and verse 4 be joyful rejoice in the lord always and again i say rejoice someone shout rejoice, rejoice. say myself rejoice. rejoice one more time say myself rejoice. rejoice yes no more crying rejoice rejoice in the lord proverbs 17 22 rejoice be joyful void of bitterness and void of offense let's read together one to read a merry heart doeth good like medicine but a broken spirit dryeth the bones that means a condition can start from the spirit and affect you health wise that your spirit can be broken and the effect of the broken spirit can be seen in your health hallelujah with all due respect and i say this to the glory of god you carry a blood pressure meter and measure me you will think i'm a baby that just came out of my mother's womb say joy there are many of you having high blood pressure over nothing you need to rid yourself of bitterness rid yourself of offense ephesians 4 31 i'm showing you a very powerful secret this fourth one it's a very serious one. Let's read together. Don't be tired of reading. You're in church. Ready? One to read. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Did God just speak to you? Bitterness. Let me tell you this. There are two keys I have learned to remain joyful void of bitterness void of offense i want to share it with you please learn this as a powerful key this is a deliverance service for someone now number one always interpret things from the lens of god's sovereign plan this is the first key to remaining joyful free from bitterness always interpret things no matter what happens to you interpret it from the lens of god's sovereign plan in Romans 8.28, please give it to us quickly. Romans 8.28. We know that all things, someone shout all things. All things. One more time. Sounds like you're sleeping, Koinonia. All we know that all things work together. Work together. Disappointments, betrayals, backstabbings, backbiting. Are we together? Falsehood that God has an ability to mix it like a cake maker mixes all kinds of things when you watch people making cake they will put something that looks like blue add another thing that looks like green don't mind them it's working together at the end of it it will produce something that you will eat and not want to stop eating all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are called listen no matter what happens in your life especially negative things there are two questions you need to ask number one do i love god number two am i walking in obedience if these two things are there find rest do i love god genuinely and sincerely number two am i walking in obedience to his word and it's only you and god that can answer that question are we together always interpret things from God's sovereign
plan. Genesis 50, 19 and 20. After the brothers of Joseph betrayed him and all kinds of things happened, Joseph told them, and Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I in the place of God? Watch this, verse 20. But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good, to bring to pass as it is this day, to save much people. Everybody say to save much people. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. That's what God is doing in someone's life. Hey, you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. One more time, sing it from the depth of your heart. You take what the enemy meant. So, listen, I'm giving you a key to remain joyful, void of bitterness. A or one, interpret things from the lens of God's sovereign plan. No matter how negative it is, James 1, 2 to 4, the Bible says, count it all joy. Let's hurry up. Count it all joy. What did he say to count it as? Do not count it as a loss. Do not count it as a disappointment. Oh, this is where champions have been wounded. Generals have been wounded because of offense. This one said this about me. Me? This one did this. And you fed away your potential for remaining. When you see men who remain, there are people who have mastered the secret of joy, void of offense, void of bitterness. This one is particularly to leaders. There is no leader who got to the leadership place by growth who has not faced betrayal, huh? leaders, backstabbing oh, in its variety. Unfortunately, it will not end at this level. It is the reality of human nature. But you take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good. You turn it for good. So you can laugh through storms. You take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good. You turn it for good. All this I am angry. Oh, till I go to my grave over my... Ah, oh, come on, throw away that thing and grow up. Never wait for men to change to be happy. That is an expensive risk with your destiny. Never wait for men to change or repent or be converted or be wise. Don't risk your happiness and your joy that much. No. <laughs> Are you learning? Always interpret things from God's sovereign plan. No matter what it is. God has a way of working it for my good. Whether it is criticism, whether it is persecution, whether it's backbiting, sometimes God can allow it as painful as it is to forewarn you of something that can destroy you in the future. Sometimes God can use it to help you. Sometimes God can use it to put you in check. Sometimes God can use it to test your stamina. Always see things from the standpoint of God's sovereign love, God's sovereign plan. That everything in your life is adding up. You are going forward, gravitating forward. Second thought to help you remain in joy. Are you learning koinonia? When you go through any kind of unfavorable season, always focus on the goodness of God. This is a big secret in my life. Don't focus on pain. Don't focus on stories. Don't focus on people, whether people who hurt you. Focus on the goodness of God. Something happens to you when you begin to focus on the goodness of God. It has a therapeutic effect. It can heal you from pain. Are we together now? I'm supposed to be promoted a director, but somebody played politics and they pushed me away. Every time you see that person who played politics, you will feel like someone give me a knife. You can't be living in that pain. The person is a director. You are the one suffering. 
Bitterness is like swallowing poison and watching in frustration why the other person is not dying. Men will be men. Wise men will remain wise till they change. Fools will remain fools till they change. Mediocres will remain mediocres till they change. Don't wait for people to change before you become happy and joyful. Always think of the goodness of God. No matter what is wrong in your life or not right in your life, there is something God has done well. Am I right on that? There is something God has done right. Let me give you a big secret. Count your blessings. Every time you want to complain and you are in pain and bitterness, that's what John the Baptist would have done. He wouldn't have died like this. If John the Baptist made up his mind that, well, Lord, thank you for the privilege to have been the one to ordain Jesus. I've been ignored right now. Jesus is not even asking how I'm doing. But nonetheless, I give you praise and I give you glory. You have been good to me. Someone say thank you, Jesus. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am made, I will sing of the goodness of God. Very powerful song. Listen. Your goodness is running after it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Prophesy to yourself. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Leave all those who hate you. They are not the reason why you are not going forward. That is an extra luggage you want to carry. You are on a flight. Leave all the naysayers and the backbiters and the ill wishers and the Judas is kissing you as a sign. You just leave them. Focus on the goodness of God. Can I tell you, psychologists teach us that focus creates feelings. If you are angry right now and I tell you I just transferred two million naira, it doesn't matter whether I'm playing or not. What did you hear? Two million naira. You just smile and say, is it true? You are still very fine, but you are happy. The same way you can stand in the mirror and say it doesn't matter. Listen, I'm sharing with you irrefutable principles. People will look at you and say, Madam, don't you get angry? Are you not a human being in this Nigeria? You tell them, I found a way of the spirit that I can rejoice always void of offense void of bitterness you can walk to your office and find in the middle of people conspiring your downfall and greet all of them would you like to have coffee or something can i get you something and they smile at you every time you rejoice in the presence of enemies you heap up coal on them not pretentious joy not ha <laughs> ha you are dying they are seeing you bleed that is fake Laughter that is as a result of revelation. Dominion that your destiny depends on you and God. Are we together? There are some tears that are unnecessary. Respect your tears. Don't shed it carelessly. Go back home tonight and think of the goodness of God. You are still in that one rent, one room. But give God thanks. I have food on my table. Lord, I give you thanks. Are you learning this now? Honestly, if this is what you came to learn tonight, do you know that there are great people who are wounded and have taught you, those who refuse to be healed become enemies of their destiny and the destiny of others. Nobody who is healed will wound others. Most people who wound others are people who are trying to heal and they do not know how to heal. So they inflict pain on others to find comfort. It's a psychological principle. When you failed in life, you get angry when you see others excelling. So it's something in your heart wishes that they come down to your level so that you can find comfort. When you bring them down, you now feel bad because you were not wicked, you were just frustrated. Your goodness is running after. Let me advise you here, if you're a man of God or a CEO, 
don't give yourself headache going around to say what are they saying about me in this office do they like me what do you think the person you are saying will answer say, in fact they said the other day ah you are the only one who <laughs> you are asking the mastermind of your hatred what they are saying about you and they said the last time i think i heard that uh, they said you are such a nice leader in fact they look forward to you becoming gm you say you mean it even that other man said it said, i'm the one trust me you now give him something and he becomes an ally and once you move he just looks at you with pity and says what a fool of a leader can i tell you one of the quality of leaders is that they have so built themselves understanding the world of men almost nothing surprises them when you find a leader who puts his hand on his head in shock he was not trained well because leaders understand men their strengths and their vulnerabilities that good men can become wicked they have their will wicked men can repent to become champions so you do not tie the vacillations of men to your growth give them an opportunity to be all that they want to be to explore all the versions of themselves but maintain your health for the sake of his name and your destiny is someone learning say i remain joyful This is true for ministers, spouses. Remain joyful, joyful in the Lord. This is my mentality. I look at everything that happens around my life from the standpoint of God's love and his sovereign power. I'm aware of how jealous God is for me. So I interpret everything from a winner's view. Honestly, this is my life, truly speaking. Is someone learning get used to men before they break your heart into pieces koinonia hear my advice my dear sister get used to men before they break your heart into pieces i'm not talking in terms of relationship i'm speaking seriously here <laughs> brothers get used to men before they break your heart into pieces leaders get used to men you will always find basis for conflict, betrayal, backstabbing in every organization, including Koinonia. There is no organization that is 100% free of the tendencies. Your assignment as a leader is to culture your people to minimize it. Waiting for perfection to find joy. It's like waiting for the cloud to touch the ground. It will not happen. Has someone grown tonight? Be joyful, oh. go back home and rejoice and dance. And somebody looks at you and says, just to let you know you are not coming back to this office again. Why? What did I do? You may feel the pain, but you just remember my sermon. Some of you will hear this, my voice again in the night while you are sleeping. And I will shout it as my friend, stop crying anyhow. Stop crying, rejoice. I've already taught you here that everybody cannot hate you. Remember? It's a law that does not work for any man. Even Satan is not hated by everybody. I've taught you this. Terrorists have wives. They met somebody as a terrorist and said, I want to spend the rest of my life with you. And the lady said, I agree. Knowing he's a terrorist. There is hope for everybody. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. It is my strength. Hallelujah. Let me give you number five. We have to end. See why it's good to come to church? It's good to come to Koinonia. Now hear this, to wrap up number four so that you write five, I wrote something here that the Lord ministered to me this afternoon, that joy is one of the greatest demonstrations of faith. Joy is one of the greatest demonstrations of faith. First Peter 1 Peter 1.8 Joy is one of the greatest demonstrations of faith. Here's what the Bible says. Whom have not seen, ye love, 
in whom though now ye see him not ye yet believe him ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory you haven't seen it yet things have not added up yet the rent has not come yet are we together but you rejoice rejoice someone when you go back home lock yourself today and laugh and smile and rejoice truly and if you don't know what to rejoice about think about the five word based funniest occurrences in your life reminisce on them and laugh laugh away nonsense laugh away childishness rejoice oh i remember one time in the university i was waiting for school fees i remember i cried for nothing and you before you know it you are glowing and rejoicing yet you have not paid your rent and because joy is what helps us and brings us into the harvest whilst you are rejoicing god is seeing a man of faith he will wake someone and say send an alert of one million this one million i've been talking about and this two million i've been talking about i've taught you if you don't believe it please allow your neighbor receive in peace <laughs> number five the staying power God is raising joyful people tonight for someone 10 people have called you 50 years now whereas you are 31 that's a message you are losing joy he's speaking on your face someone looks at you and says are you in my generation and he says, are you joking I'm a, I'm a young man they say I can't believe it you have wrinkled yourself as a result of pain share up and glow share up and glow share up and glow share up and glow I don't care what is working or not working number five are you ready the final key I'm going to give you tonight that has been responsible for the longevity of men impact always keep the vision of your future and your destination before you keep it higher than every challenge keep it higher than every obstacle I'll take it again always keep the vision of your future the vision of your prophetic destiny before you something happens when you see the end something happens when you look at the vision exalt the vision beyond the challenges exalt the vision beyond the vicissitudes of life and you have the stamina to remain and continue Philippians 3 13 3 13 Philippians Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, it says, but one thing I do, forgetting the things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things. Everybody say those things. There are things before you. Can I give you an example? The higher realm of you, of you being anointed. There are anointings you have not received. Man of God, there are, there are churches. The globe is still waiting for you, for the impact, the imprint of God upon your life. You must learn to look away look beyond look up reaching forth before the things that are before me I press towards the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus every calling from God is not a low calling it's only challenges that are on the ground challenges come to you at your level but your calling is usually high because it demands that you rise higher than the challenges are you seeing that now Luke chapter 9 and verse 62 I wish we could find NLT Luke 9 62 let's hurry up God is speaking to someone tonight Luke 9 62 NLT but Jesus said unto him I'm only singing the verse hey I belong to Jesus never going back So many, many people, they don't know that I've made my choice to follow Jesus, I follow the Lamb wherever He leads. 
song. So many, many people, they don't know that I made my choice to follow Jesus, I follow the Lamb wherever He leads. Do you know the song now? Nina is Nina is chapter 9 someone you just sang a song of comfort for yourself no giving up no going back let's finish that scripture koinonia don't tempt me i will keep you here till tomorrow the bible says anyone watch this anyone who puts his hand on a plow and looks back either because they are calling you backbiters are calling your name mediocres and naysayers distracting you from prophecy or seasons unfavorable seasons it says if you do so you are not fit of your future it's been a powerful secret in my life open that book again look at what he told you open that book again review his speakings man of God he did not tell you you will come to Abuja and die why do you want to dig the grave he never told you you will come here and fail never told you you will relocate and go to america canada wherever japan wherever no god does not call men and leave them on the way he's a finisher did you ever read that he's called author and finisher say it after me author and that means you will finish i read a book many years ago by steve farah called finishing strong profound book that influenced my understanding no matter how close you are to destiny if you don't finish you will stay in the same group with those who did not start you have come too far are we together you've held the plow ready for harvest in ministry in business refuse to be distracted the world is full of noisemakers naysayers people full of pain they may not be wicked people just wounded and confused people hoping they can use your pain to find meaning to their lives don't hate people you to look at them from the lens of their weaknesses and focus on your future aside from joy add vision a visionless man is a defeated man already if nothing ever attacks you you have failed are we together vision gives you focus among the many things that vision gives you is the opportunity to say no to many things including good things that are not pro destiny when satan brings evil things and you easily overcome them he will line up many good things that are not needed in your destiny how many of you know that good things can kill many good things can kill satan use it is written against jesus just because it is good does not mean it is profitable for your destiny there are many good things that can destroy you need to trust the spirit of grace vision prunes your relationships vision prunes your appetite it prunes the things you can do and the things you cannot do it gives you the focus to be able to say yes if the only thing you reject in your life are bad things you are small you need to reject many good things in your life because Martha Martha can be worried and obsessed about many things her preparing a meal for Jesus was not bad but Jesus said one thing is needful 
and this Mary has chosen hallelujah ladies and gentlemen these are the secrets that empower believers to stay number one being strong in the Lord capacity and strength that is derived from knowing the God of the Bible number two submitting to the supremacy of the Word of God as final authority in all things and in all matters beyond feelings beyond emotions beyond psychology beyond intellect even beyond spiritual supposedly and visionary experiences number three build inner strength capacity for the journey through prayer men and women who know how to invest in prayer are men who have longevity of impact Four, be joyful goodness I can drum this again void of bitterness void of offense accept humans for the way they are hope for the best hope that they change hope that they find God hope that they improve but until then do not destroy your joy because of men the reality of their humanity will always play out at one point or the other and finally always keep your vision always keep your vision always keep your vision the vision of your future the vision of prophecy the vision of your destination the vision of that which God has called you to do keep it before you every time you are discouraged and there is nothing else around you that inspires you look up let your vision be clear enough if you need to give it a pictorial representation to encourage you do so if God has called you to a global ministry and you need to get them the globe and put it in your office put it before you go ahead God has called you to be an evangelist and you need the map of the world place it on your wall it's a worthy investment whatever you can do by God and under grace to encourage yourself and keep yourself alive that do and here's how the Bible ends it all haven't done all to stand he says stand I mean stand <laughs> you said stand and you are sitting you take what the enemy meant for me and you turn it for good What the enemy meant for evil We have just one prayer tonight, our time is up One prayer and then I make the altar call and we're done The one prayer is Lord I obtain the grace To outlast To outlast storms To outlast challenges to outlast vicissitudes, to outlast seasons. Someone pray. As simple as this prayer is, I obtain grace. Grace to last. I receive the staying power. The staying power in ministry. The staying power for my business, for my career. Someone by this prayer, you need to return back to business. A man of God needs to return back to ministry. Is someone praying? Return back to your children. You need to return back. You are a winner. For sure. At the end of it, you win. The hand of God insists that you win. One minute, you are praying. From the depth of your heart. I obtain grace to last. The finisher's grace is with me and work in me. I wear his storms. I outdo seasons. I outlast challenges. Oh yes, come on, pray. Nothing in my life that is unfavorable today will remain as it is. But when all is said and done, I will be standing, standing strong, standing victorious, standing graceful.
in Jesus mighty name we pray in Jesus mighty name we pray the altar call and I speak the grace upon you I want to give you an opportunity for your sake who are, who are still staying a minute or two I want you to come to the Prince of Peace the one who can help you the journey to lasting belongs it begins by knowing him you just said that you belong to him let's minimize movement I'm still going to speak over your life it always gives me joy to lead people to Jesus this is not religion it's from my heart because the more you give people a chance to know him the more you give them an opportunity to live out their prophetic destinies you are in this place following online across all our expressions overflows and you are saying apostle if you will ask me I will come to make it right with Jesus whether you are making that decision for the first time or you are making that decision you've made it again and you are rededicating your life I know there has to be one person it is that one person I'm speaking to someone in this place is angry at the opportunity you have given Satan and you are saying no more it cannot happen again I'm going to count one to five wherever you are very boldly leave your seat and come stand here leave your seat and come and stand here don't be afraid don't be ashamed come to Jesus come Come. Nina Yesu ne Bazankoma Bazankoma Never going back. Never going back. Now, now. Let's celebrate them as they come. Is someone still coming? Is someone still running to Jesus? God bless you. Bless you as you come. God bless you as you come. Hallelujah. Thank you very much for making this noble decision. I appreciate you for the courage to be here and listen let me tell you something ladies and gentlemen the Bible declares that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life those who are making this decision online as I lead them to this prayer please join them lift your right hand high above your head say this after me Lord Jesus one more time as loud as you can say Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word I love you with all my heart I believe that you are the son of the living God I believe that you died for my sin I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior my Lord and my King I declare that I'm a child of God I go for whatever and backward never amen keep your beautiful hands lifted please father thank you for this once let the power of sin satan hell and the grave be broken over their lives i decree and declare in the name of jesus that you walk in victory from today the grace that keeps the grace that causes to be victorious let that grace rest upon you and from tonight you go forward ever and backward never in jesus name we pray Please do me a favor by moving to my right. You have the counselors waving the placard. They will have a word with you just for a minute and you'll be back to your seat. Let's honor them very quickly. Give them a big God bless you, Koinonia. Hallelujah. Let me speak over your life in the name of Jesus. This grace to outlast, let it rest on you. I speak the staying power over you. You will not fall by the wayside. You will not be Ichabod. In the name of Jesus Christ. For those who are weak and weary, downcast and discouraged, find hope. I say it again, find hope. Find strength. The grace to return. For someone, the grace to pursue. The grace to overtake. And by all means, the grace to recover. Let it be released upon you. I call you a victor. I call you a sign and a wonder. His hand is strong upon you. 
let this week be a week of blessings for you testimonies from Monday to Sunday good news from Monday to Sunday laughter from Monday to Sunday abundance from Monday to Sunday the ministry of men from Monday to Sunday in the name of Jesus you return with testimonies by Sunday it will be clear from your life that God can help men in Jesus mighty name we pray give Jesus a big hand clap of praise let's share the grace together in fellowship the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore amen surely God's goodness and mercies follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever amen God bless you koinonia see you on Sunday